Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do some wet on wet stamping for another in my watercolor flower series. Now they haven't all been appropriately labeled and named and numbered, but I'm calling this number 21 in the playlist. And I'm using this Tim Holtz set called Illustrated Garden. And I'm going to stamp in my Misty and leave the paper in the Misty while I do my painting and stuff because I want to make sure that the thing lines up appropriately. And I'm going to do a cluster of a couple of this particular flower. I'll do two different cards here to give you a better idea. I'm using my Zig Clean Color Markers. Really doesn't matter which water-based markers you use, but you need to test them on the paper that you're using. I'm using Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. If you use a different paper and a different marker, it's going to act a little differently. So you're going to want to test that out. So I'm going to stamp first my greens and you can see it doesn't stamp really perfectly and that's okay because what I'm going to do here is just throw some water over the whole thing and it's gonna look like a big blob. Don't worry about it looking like a big blob because that's okay. We're gonna let this be some wet on wet type of watercolor so just use some nice clean water and move that color around and you could even spray it but I, I hesitate to put quite that much water on there. You don't want it pools when you do this watercolor wet on wet stamping. You want it to be good and damp but not not pooled up, not shiny. So now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the flower areas on the stamp. And I've already washed off the green by the way so I don't stamp more green on. And you can see it's starting to do a little bit of blending in in some areas where it was wet. And I can add some more water onto a few other spots and I can extend some of those shapes and just kind of drag a little bit of color out there. This is going to be very loose. It's very forgiving because you just want it to look like a cluster of very loose floral bushes. So move that color around. I'm using a, I believe that is a number eight or 12 brush. That is, that's probably a 12. I hope that's a 12. I shot this the other day and remembering things is not always my forte, but I had my eight, my 12 out. I know that uh, when I was shooting videos. So spreading out some color, moving some of that out, and then you can add more color onto things. I'm taking a little darker green and going over a few of the branches. You may want to either stamp this out or um, look at the other side of the stamp. The stamp is printed on the back side, on the gray side, so you can look at it there and be able to tell, but you might also want to just stamp it so you can see what you're, you're coloring on with your marker. So I'm just going to add a few different different little bits of two different green colors here. So I can add a little bit of detail. And look at that. I'm starting to get some real nice shapes in there, some definition in some areas. And now I'm going to grab, an, grab being an orange color and putting that sort of at the base of each one of my flower clusters. And interested to see what's going to happen. These would look different every single time, so yours will not look exactly like mine, because there's some of them you can see that are sharp and really contrasty. Others are really soft, so it depends on how much water is down underneath of it. It seems to be nice to have both, so you have some areas that are drier and some areas that are wetter, and it's entirely up to you how much of which one you want to have on your card. But I wanted to have sort of a, a cluster on this right-hand side, so I'm going to get it started and then we'll speed it up since you've already seen how to do it. But you can watch the scene develop as I add my green again. I'm going to do the green first. You could also do the flowers first. And I will do the flowers first on the other one. So it really doesn't make any difference really. You could also put a little bit of water down on the paper before you even do anything. So I could have created that, that wetness on the paper first or I can create it once I get the stamping down. Sometimes it'll help to get the stamping down first because you know where the area is that you're going to be stamping into. So I'm getting another cluster beginning to develop with that yellow. And me being a lover of yellow, that's always a good thing. Add a little bit of orange, tapping a little bit of that color on there. Jump over here and do another cluster down here at the bottom, just turning the stamp in different directions so I can get just the piece that I want. I could have gone for just greens here, but I thought I'm going to go for some more flowers down in this area. 
and add both the yellow and the orange so I get both colors set up here. Ooh, and look how pretty that is when it gets all soft and mushy. Now I've got one little extra section down in here and all I need to do is finish that up. And of course I did all my color on the right hand side, which turns into the left hand side and did not print on my paper. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more to the paper and move it around with the brush. Now, in addition to the stamping, you can also just take the marker and go straight to the paper in some of these areas. But if you wanna get the same kinds of clusters, doing the stamping often will help. But I'm gonna go into a few areas to add a little more detail into a couple of them with a couple branches. And depending on how wet the paper is, you may see almost nothing of some colors because when they hit sheer water, they're not, there's not much pigments going to come out. So these are fairly dry, so I'm getting some rather hard edged little lines here. And then you can go back in with your brush and soften them. And I wanna leave them mostly hard edged uh, because I want that, I wanna have that little bit of detail in there. But I can also take my dark orange marker and add more into my clusters. So as it's drying, I can, I'm holding the marker kind of at the, on the side, so I get a little bit of that dry brush look and can add a little bit more. And then just stamped a sentiment. This is a sentiment set, one of my favorites lately from Pretty Pink Posh. It has all different kinds of them with mixed script and regular text letters. So I'm gonna do one more from this stamp set and I'm gonna use purple flowers. I'm picturing these as some sort of thistle bushes. I don't want to do a cluster along the right hand side this time. So again, stamping the flowers first this time doesn't matter whether you do the green or the colors first makes little difference. And one of the reasons that I wanted to try this with the zig markers is because they move a lot with water. As soon as you, as soon as they look at water, they get all excited and they like to run all over the paper. So this technique works really well with them. If you have some of the brands that don't move as much, then you may want to use more of a Bristol paper that might give you a little more movement or uh, the um, Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper might help colors move. So try some different watercolor papers if you don't get the kind of movement that I get on this Arches cold press paper. But now I'll stamp a little bit more with some green and not much came out. So I decided to add a little bit more onto some of these other branches as well and flip it over again. I love the Misty because it allows me to restamp things and get them a little more way, the way that I want them, which is always helpful because when you end up with a very little color coming out or something doesn't stamp clearly, it's always a, a big help to be able to fix that rather than start your project all over again. I have had to do that on many, many occasions. And for someone like me who can draw in missing parts, I know it can be a little bit easier for, for me to do to recover things than for some other folks. So the Misty is a really great invention. This one is the regular size Misty. There's also a mini, but I do find I use the regular Misty more often because I do things like this where I'm hanging my image off the edge. And here I'm just using the magnets to hold it down, but you can also, there's corners that you can use to offset things and make room for yourself to do things that are hanging off as well. So there's lots of accessories that you can get for your Misty. So now I'm going to do another, and that was just some residual color that stamped when I just laid my stamp down. But since I'm just kind of doing a really loose thing, it doesn't matter even if I screw it up, even if I ended up moving that stamp and getting some some color drooled on there from something else wouldn't make much of a difference whatsoever. So paint a whole bunch more water. We'll speed this up since you've seen the very first of, of these. And then add a bunch of water to some areas where I want to stamp some other things. So if I want to put a little more of these leaves, now watch how they stamp when they're in water versus when they weren't really makes a huge difference. So I'm going to make a few other little little leaves and things coming out from there. Add a little more of the purple, the dark purple, into my flowers. 
and that just gives them a tiny tiny bit more depth and now I'm going to tuck in a few more flowers in places where I have some gaps well, on this particular card like I said I want to have this cluster off to the right hand side and allow the left hand side to be kind of empty I want to put some leaves in there so I'm going to turn this so I just get the leaves and since I wiped it off I'm only going to get color where I put color so I'm not going to get hopefully any weird stamping mistakes somewhere else but here now I can get more of those beautiful stamped leaves in that cluster and I like that enough I thought well let me do that again down here at the bottom and do a little bit more of the stamping down in this bottom corner isn't that beautiful that all you have to do is add a little bit of a sentiment and I popped it up on a layer with a tiny strip of black showing just to add some contrast to it really elegant and simple simple cards hope you enjoyed this if you did please click that like button you can click on my face to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already and uh, there's also some other videos if you're interested in watching some more while you're here on YouTube and I'll see you guys next time bye bye